Here we go. It's time for cloning 2.0. Hello, film worlders. It's me, your host, Micah Pendleton, and welcome to Premiere Prep. So yes, today is cloning 2.0, and what that means is I've already covered cloning before, but that was way back in season one, and yeah, I felt that it was really something that I needed to do again, especially after my conversation with Ace the Dolphin Guy on one of my videos. So we had this conversation going back and forth, and he was like, could you do an episode on cloning? I'm like, I've already done that. And then I went back and I looked at it, and I'm like, I need to do it again. So here we go. Cloning 2.0. If you haven't seen the test video for this effect, make sure you go to the Mike and Master Studios YouTube channel to watch it there, and make sure to subscribe there as well. So to do this effect, it required three different shots. One for each of me, so the left and the right me, and then also I needed a clean plate. What is a clean plate, you might ask? It is very simply an empty shot. No actors, no moving objects, just simply the still set or location that you are using. This is very, very helpful and in many cases necessary when you are doing some visual effects shots. That way you can mask things out, have something just completely removed, things like that. Using clean plates, you can also, <laughs> you can remove light fixtures that are in the background that you didn't want there. You can you remove buildings and all kinds of stuff. And that kind of goes into a little bit of maybe matte paintings, which we did cover back in this episode. So let's take our two elements and our clean plate and get into the actual tutorial. So here is our test shot, and as you can see, well, it's, you know, right here it seems pretty clean, but then of course right there you probably see exactly how I do the effect. Um, so there are definitely ways that I can improve this, but it's uh, definitely a good, uh, good tutorial piece, you know. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into the actual tutorial. Um, so here is our composite, and as you can see we have our three input images. Um, which are uh, me, me on this side, me on that side, and then our clean plate, like we were talking about and everything. So, this handoff, as you can probably guess, it's very specifically timed. Let me find it here. The point in which I grab it from myself, it's obviously a very specific point. Um, that they have to meet up and match and everything. So it, it took a couple of takes and everything, but timing it was very important. So okay, let me just let me just show you this. This is how I went ahead and timed it. It's a little bit different than what most people might do, but what I did, if I take this to half opacity, you can see I have my two clips right here. You know, there's there's one clip, there's the other clip, and I lined them up in here, that way I can go back and forth, back and forth between each individual frame and line it up to the exact frame. So there's the exact handoff. And as you can see, there's kind of right there, you can see exactly how I did it. There's the bucket, I set it on the bucket, and then I went to the other side and picked it up. So uh, yeah, the, the worst part was the glare on the cup. Um, here, let me show you that. So when I hand it off, you can see the glare come on right there, and I did not take effect in. I, I did not take into account the fact that when I move, a glare, an extra glare, would be right on the cup. So it, that really didn't help sell the effect. But when it's all playing through, you know, it it it's it can work. So I I can definitely improve it next time. But so there you have it. So I timed it up in here and I exported each one. So I, I, I took this, put it back up to full opacity, exported this clip until I have just this by itself, and then I took it all the way down, and then I exported this until I have just this. That way when I import it into the compositor, I don't have to do any retiming within the compositor, which can be very difficult. So there's just a little tip for you when doing this. All right, so here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna walk you through exactly what I did. Um, we're not gonna go over, well, like I'm not gonna create the entire effect because I mean it's all right here. There's no reason to do that. Um, so a lot of this effect came down to um, color correction. You know, matching it between the two because I, 
again, when I'm stepping away from one spot to the other spot, the camera is like auto adjusting and stuff like that. So I had to do a lot of um, color uh, changing and stuff, which is something you'll have to do based on your shot. So that's not really anything to do with this effect. But as you can see here, I've got my different masks masking out different points. So let's, let's go ahead and see what they're masking out. Um, first, I've got this mask, which masks out, you know, me on this side. It adds me on top, let me see, it adds me on top of this clip. So there we are together. Okay, but as you can see, the bucket's still there. So I needed to remove that, and that's where the clean plate came in. So right here, we have the clean plate. You know, nothing there. So I brought all of this down, and I added them together, and clean plated it out. So the bucket's completely gone. You know, and I again I had a color grade and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, I know this can be a little confusing right here, but um, it, it really does make sense, especially when you're getting into it. So I, you know, clean plated it out, and then I had to um, <laughs> when I when when the uh, wait back here when at these points where my hand's down there, as you can see, it's getting cut off by the by the. Uh, the clean plate I did. It, it was completely removed by that. So as you can see, the mask, is, it's right there where it's being taken out. So my, my hand's gone. <laughs> so what I had to do is I had to reintroduce my hand and the cup. And that's where we get down to this mask, which was just my hand, as you can see there. All right, and then add it back right on top. So I, I plug the original footage, after it's been color graded, of course, I plug that right back in to that footage, and there you have it. Now, as you can see, this hand is still being cut off as well, so I had to do the same thing for that. So there's that one's mask. I know it's a little bit rough. It doesn't exactly look, my, look like my hand, but that's what was needed. Um, and so then I added that right into the shot. So, and then also, you know, a little bit of, little bit of uh, grading and stuff going on in between as well. And there they are together. Now this took uh, quite a bit of rotoscoping as you can probably guess. So let's take a look at the rotoscoping basically. All right, um, the rotoscoping, change this to mask. While it was straightforward, um, it was not the easiest thing. All right, so uh, I, I really had to do some crazy stuff with this rotoscoping. As you can see, it's going all up in there. That's just because I had so many points and I didn't need it above the actual couch cushion. So I just moved them up top. I mean, there's no, no need to rotoscope things unnecessarily. It just wastes a whole lot of time. Um, and it didn't change the look at all. So, it, I mean, it, it, it looks, you know, pretty good and all that. Because all I had to do was get above the couch cushion. Because that's where I had clean plated that out. All right, and then I also had, all right, the bucket removal mask, which is where everything gets cut off, as, as you could see earlier. Um, and then also I had uh, this mask to add this hand back into there. And then, of course, the last mask, which is really the first one, it's um, where I add myself back over into with me. So in the original episode, it was very simply just me and me. I didn't have any interaction. And it was very simple. You could do that. You could do that effect very, very quickly and easily. But as you can see, this one it took a little bit more. All right, um, but it's not impossible. Definitely not um, too hard to do. So let's just break this down real quick again. So we have me on one side, me on the other. We still have our bucket in there, and we have the cup being set on there by me and picked up by me. And then we have our clean plate. All right. Well, first, using this mask. I combined these two like that. So there's the two clips combined. All right, and then I had to remove the bucket, whereas this mask comes in and the clean plate, which got added at this point. All right, and now I need to add my hand back in. And that, let's see, that's where this mask comes in. And then we add it all in right there. So there's my hand back in there. But as you can see, this is still lopped off. So we had to have a mask for that as well, which then we added right there. 
and we did a little bit of blurring right there to help, you know, instead of feathering um, within the mask editor, sometimes it's a little easier just to add a Gaussian blur. A uh, little tip for you. So you can, you can, you, you can take your original mask and see how rough it is there, and then you can just blur it a little bit. And that, it's, sometimes that's a little bit better than feathering, I find. Um, and then we add it all together and we, you know, we have our final result. Um, so that's really it. You got your two elements and then you mask them out, combine them all together. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really a straightforward effect that can become quite complicated um, or it can be, you know, really easy. If you had a motion controlled camera, you could, again, you could do this with camera movement. Um, and that would require a lot of rotoscoping, but it would look really, really good. Um, so yeah, that, that really does it. It's a very easy effect to do and really quite a fun one. And that concludes this tutorial. Thank you guys very much for watching. Coming up next, we have a quick update video that Michael uh, joined in with me on, and also our 2016 Filmmakers Christmas list, which is coming next week. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. I am your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember, dream big, pay small. I'll catch you next time.